Welcome to People Power in Politics. Hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in depth analysis. That's People Power in Politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holes barred. You are the people, you have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc. Good day and a warm welcome to everyone. Today we have with us in the studio Dr. Anderson Reynolds, who is the author of They Called Him Brother George, Portrait of a Caribbean Politician. Lovely to have you, Dr. Reynolds. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Happy to have you. <laughs> So, what motivated you to delve into the political journey of George Odlum, and why do you believe his story is significant? To begin with, he's one of our most charismatic and controversial politicians. Um, at, the, at the time of his death, there was a, a huge outpouring of eulogies and um, tributes in the newspapers. People were going on the radio stations Everybody was just um, talking about him, writing about him, praising him, and so forth. But you see, um, although he's considered a great political leader, he, he didn't write any memoirs or any book-length um, account of his personal or professional life. Um, so I thought, well, we thought, well, it would be collecting all of those tributes and eulogies in the form of a book, will be a, a great way to start documenting his personal and political life. Um, so, so at the time, I had my assistant print out all the all those um, eulogies and um, tributes. Um, but it, but that was he he passed in um, um, two thousand and three. <laughs> so it is only now. Um, so really, that this book is almost like twenty years in the making. So it, it, it is only now, 20 years later, that the book has materialized. Um, why? Well, he, he was a very um, fascinating um, political leader, very controversial. He was considered one of the a great orator, one of the greatest coming out of St. Lucia. Um, he was considered a man of acute intelligence and, and so forth, and he was... People credit him um, for raising the political consciousness of St. Lucians. So a whole generation of, of people grew up that grew up in his era became more political, more politically attuned, and so and they saw him as a great educator. So in part one, you trace George Adelon's entrance into St. Lucian politics. What key events or decisions do you think define his early political career? Um, when he came, you know, he, he was college educated in the UK. So he came back, when he came back to, to the region, he was working as a secretary of a West, uh, the Eastern Car a West Indies um, kind of um, collective organization. So while there, he, st he became part in early 1970, he became part of a forum group. Um, the St. Lucia Forum, where they were advocating for educating people politically, um, criticizing both go government when when they saw fit. They were like a protest group, uh, 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 a protest, but th they said they were not political. Um, so, But th they had a l large following, especially among young people um, and so forth. But pretty soon... The government, um, the government at the time, um, saw them as um, being opposed to the government or um, putting the government in a bad light. Since a lot of them were civil servants, and civil servants are not supposed to go on political platform and and campaign and so on, the government pass in um, pass legislation or or um, apply the legislation that that says that civil servants cannot be politically in publicly involved so a lot of the people in the forum um, they saw that as victimization 
So even if they didn't st start out as a political group, this such victimization by the government forced them to turn into politics. So fr from the forum, George Odlum and some of his other colleagues started a political party called SLAM. So that was one of, um, so when he came back, the forum and the transition into, into, um, in, in, into um, I think, SLAM um, was, I think, uh, uh, a critical point. But SLAM did not last long, so they transitioned, they teamed up with the St. Lucia Labour Party. And then in 1974, Odlum and his colleagues um, contested elections under the SLP banner. And they, 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 they lost the elections. Odlum didn't win his seat. But, um, but the 1974 elections gave them the experience and set the stage for 1979 when they did um, got into power and when Odlum did win his seat to become a minister of government. So you present a selection of George Odlum's speeches and writings. What do you consider to be the most remarkable or influential pieces that showcase his intellectual contributions? Um, he's, when he was out of government, he, he was like uh, he owned and operated a newspaper. Um, and of course, his writings in the newspaper, he used the newspaper more as a political tool to attack the government and, and so forth. And his writings were, were very biting, very, um, very cogent, <laughs> um, uh, and, and so forth. And, and, and then, um, so I, I provided samples of his um, writings in the, in, in the newspapers. But also, he was, uh, he was a St. Lucian ambassador to the UN, and he was also at a different time the foreign minister. So he gave about f four to six several speeches at the UN, and they were this these speeches really presented his worldview of um, standing up for the downtrodden, for the disadvantaged, for the dispossessed, and championing the cause of the third world countries. Um, so his UN speeches, I think, really established or gave a sense of his worldview. Many consider it a tragedy that George Olum never became prime minister. In your research, what reasons or obstacles prevented him from reaching this position? <laughs> well, um, there are several, right? Um, w one of them was that George Odlum, he was such a great orator, and he had such great self-belief, self, such great self-confidence, that he thought his speaking on, on the platform would carry the day. So he was very opposed to um, doing house-to-house -house politicking and <laughs> holding babies, <laughs> you know, what the politicians typically do. Um, he was very opposed to that. Also, um, he was so confident. For example, in 1974, he lost his seat and his party lost the elections. He was so confident of his, um, that he would win his seat that he spent more time campaigning in, other, in, in his colleagues' districts. And also, yes, so that's one. I think it was uh, maybe an... And uh, overconfidence, and uh, um, and I would say uh, not not giving enough e emphasis, underestimating what it takes to win elections. Th that would be one. Um, another reason he and Odlum himself gave that reason. He said um, it was um, forces. Forces aligned against him. Conservative forces aligned against him, because when he was in, when his government um, got in power around the time he, SLP got in power in 1979, of which George Odlum was part, we had the Grenadier Revolution in the U.S. backyard, 
and we we all know what happened. The, the U.S. eventually invaded um, Grenada and basically get rid of the revolution, and re Grenada returned to typical um, democratic rule. So, so the U.S. was very wary of um, the leftist um, politicians like George Odlum operating in, in its backyard and, and the threat of having another communist island in the U.S. backyard. So according to Odlum, the, the U.S., um, um, some people believe the U.S. spent money um, in St. Lucia um, to, in, in opposition to Odlum. Um, also, locally, people accused, especially the opposition government, UWP party, the opposition government, accused um, Odlum of communism. And um, so a lot of businesses um, w was afraid that if Odlum became prime minister, he would nationalize industries. He would turn, he will be anti-capitalism, um, um, not that not pro-business, and and also foreign, you know, a, a lot of the large companies in St. Lucia are foreign-owned, and even the foreign-owned companies would have been afraid of um, be, having their business, their corporations nationalized, or having the government impose much higher ta tax taxes on them. So, So, in other words, International forces, according to Rodlum, international forces um, was aligned against him. Domestic forces, especially among the business class, the, um, was, was opposed to him um, staying in power and becoming prime minister. <laughs> so, so these are maybe, um, jo, jo, there are probably others um, that I that doesn't come to mind right now, but but this will this this probably was one of the main 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 reasons um, um, that um, Odlum received stiff opposition in terms of becoming prime minister. So, if George Odlum had become um, prime minister, what aspects of his visions for Saint Lucia do you think would have been realized, and how might the nation have been different? Yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> Um, in the book, that's the final section in the book, um, and I had two two persons, who, who, Modest Downs, who is a award-winning poet, and who ran in um, '82, ran um, represented, um, ran under the George Odlum political banner, and also Peter Lansico, who was a a, a, a diplomat. During the time Odlum was a, a minister of government, so they, they they provided that kind of analysis. Well, to me, um, I, I think maybe the we would have been. I think Odlum might have placed more emphasis on education. Um, he probably would have placed much more emphasis. On culture, um, um, uh, he um, he was very upset about the extent to which um, Saint Lucia, Saint Lucian businesses, businesses operating in Saint Lucia are foreign owned. For example, most of the hotels, many of the large hotels, are foreign owned. So he was um, advocating for a policy of encouraging, me, say, medium-sized small hotels owned by St. Lucians. So he was pushing for St. Lucians, the ordinary St. Lucians, to own, to have a larger stake in the economy. Um, I think he was a person, a politician, very much for the downtrodden, very much for the oppressed. So I suspect he might have um, um, stress or he might have implemented policies, more policies that had to do with um, safety nets, um, social safety nets. Um, he, he, 
he was concerned there was a, a hurricane, hurricane Allen in 1980-1981 that caused a lot of havoc in St. Lucia and um, a lot of foodstuffs was in, 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 in short supply. So around that time, he was kind of advocating the government getting involved in buying um, importing foods in bulk and the government being responsible for the distribution of those goods. So, um, so, so, so yes, so he had that kind of um, socialist um, tenden tendency. W one of the issues raised by, I think it was um, either Modest Downs or, or was that Odlum, since Odlum was um, socialist oriented, if he was prime minister, St. Lucia would have had much closer relationship with um, Cuba and Venezuela and other such um, many more governments in Latin America and so forth than, uh, than as, as is obtained now. So I, I think these are some of the directions he would have probably pushed the country. But there, there are a few other things that people may have found troubling. He was very much into... Um, it seems like he was advocating to have his own um, um, security force. <laughs> um, and also, one of his beliefs is that St. Lucia is the, the multi-party St. Lucia, the multi-party pa multi state as per the, the British parliamentary government is not appropriate for St. Lucia. So he was advocating for a single party state. So, um, so when you when you think of that, along with him wanting to establish his own security forces, um, I think there was concerned that he would. Um, uh, well, one of some people's concern was that he would he may have gone the way of Grenada in terms of um, um, a one party socialist state. But 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 that's extreme an extreme view, <laughs> um, yeah. So in my mind, um, he, him becoming prime minister, it would, it would have been very interesting, and I I think he may have taken the country forward in many in many regards, but then there was also a misgiving because he. Given his rhetoric of um, single party state, socialism, um, special security forces, there was that kind of um, uh, uh, misgiving about him becoming prime minister. So thank you, Dr. Anderson Reynolds. And where can people find your book? They called him Brother George, Portrait of a Caribbean Politician. Well, in the U.S., it will be mostly be um, um, Amazon, both as print and ebook. And but in Saint Lucia, it, it, there are several outlets in Saint Lucia. Uh, well, I like to think of it as an international book tour. <laughs> and um, so, tomorrow, at the Saint Lucia House in Brooklyn, will be my first stop where I'm having a book, a New York book launch. Then afterwards, I'm supposed to. We are scheduling for Atlanta, Washington, D.C., Toronto, um, Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut. We are also hoping to, to go as far as London um, later in, in November. Yeah, thank you. People Power in Politics, Hard Talk, Riveting Interviews, Community Updates, In-Depth Analysis. That's People Power in Politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holes barred. You are the people. You have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc.